Hi, my name is Brianna Oswald. I am one of your G Resolutions licensed mental health counselors with the Student Assistance Program here at EFSC. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited to be doing this video for you. Today, I wanna to talk about the pandemic, the big COVID. I hope to present to you some helpful and creative tools to utilize for self-care for the pandemic. Hopefully something will click with you that you may even use after the threat of COVID-19 is long gone. So you might have noticed that nearly everything is different since the pandemic started. I know I have. Life has changed pretty drastically for me. Schools turned to virtual learning, theme parks closed, malls closed, store hours were shortened, flights were canceled, cruises were canceled, concerts were canceled, medical appointments are via Zoom, and even some beaches closed down at some point. Not to mention, social distancing is now a part of everybody's everyday language and we have to remember to bring a mask wherever we go. Something to help you get through these really strange times is to remember that no one in our lifetime has ever dealt with something like this before. So don't be hard on yourself if you feel out of sorts or if you don't know quite how to handle it. If you take a little look at history, we're not the only ones. Literally everything that is happening in, happening in regards to the virus right now happened back when the Spanish flu was occurring as well. It's not an easy thing to deal with and there's no easy answer, now or then. One thing that I strongly recommend trying to use is something we call reframing, which is a therapy term. Reframing is a self-help tool where you restructure your thoughts to be more positive or at the very least neutral when you can't be positive and most importantly, realistic. For example, I got a D on my communications assignment. I'm gonna fail this class. I am so stupid. I don't know why I thought I was cut out for college. There's a lot of jumping to conclusions in just those few sentences. If we were to relook and reframe those thoughts, it might sound something like this. I got a D on my communications assignment, but I know that I didn't do my best. I was distracted and I didn't take it quite seriously. Next assignment, I know that I need to slow down Stay focused and ask for help if I need it. This one grade is not going to kill me, nor does this assignment determine my intelligence or my future. Besides, I haven't even looked at my options. Perhaps my professor will allow me to redo it, offer extra credit, or at the very least, provide helpful feedback regarding why this grade was given and how I can improve for next time. When it comes to the pandemic, you might find yourself thinking all sorts of negative thoughts. I know I've caught myself a few times. Things like, I can't believe I couldn't throw my best friend the biggest baby shower that she deserves. It's not fair. Or, they canceled my cruise. Well, now celebrating my birthday isn't gonna be a special. You only turn 21 once. Or, I lost my job due to COVID. I won't be able to pay my bills. I'll probably get evicted. Or, I can't do online classes. I didn't sign up for this. I need in-person instruction. I just do. I guess I'll just fail. All those thoughts are valid concerns and have very real and warranted emotions attached to them. It's okay and healthy to grieve those losses. Everyone is missing out on something and has had to make various sacrifices. Keep in mind, none of this is your fault. We didn't really see this coming and most importantly, it will end. 
try to stay positive and patient. Be creative. Who says that you have to celebrate your 21st birthday on your actual birthday? Celebrate it whenever you want and when you can. Also, a lot of people have lost their jobs due to the virus. When this is all over, most things will open back up and your old job may be waiting for you. Until then, you might just have to try something different. That's just the reality of it, but you're not alone. And who knows, maybe you'll like this new job better. Now, I know what you may be thinking. You're thinking that maybe I'm minimizing your concerns or encouraging you to see life through rose-colored glasses. I assure you that is not my intention and that is not the function of reframing. I want you to stay grounded and focused and to think clearly and realistically. This helps you stay calm and confident and more likely to work through whatever circumstances have been presented to you. Reframing is way easier said than done, but with practice, it can become second nature to you in no time. Please feel free to contact us and schedule an individual therapy appointment with us if you're struggling with reframing or if you have any questions about it. So besides reframing, what else can be done to help you stay focused and stable during the pandemic? Two words, coping skills. Almost any activity that brings you joy that you can do safely under the guidelines of the Centers for Disease Control are also tools that you can manage these anxious times and feelings of isolation. If you have any questions or need clarification on what those guidelines are, please visit the Centers for Disease Control website at www.cdc.gov. I particularly found the section entitled How to Protect Yourself the most helpful. You can find it under Learn More About COVID-19 right on the front page of the website. There you can read about how to prevent yourself from contracting the virus, how to prevent it from spreading, and in the worst case scenario, what to do if you get sick. Be aware, however, that there are unhealthy coping skills that end up hurting ourselves or others and should be avoided at all times. Usually these kinds of coping skills can turn into a form of addiction and need to be treated by a professional counselor in an individual or group setting. These things are things like self-harming, cutting or burning yourself, using illicit drugs, binging alcohol, anorexia or bulimia, gambling, overspending, overeating, and oversleeping. If you or anybody else have issues with any of those things or anything even similar, please consider contacting a specialized mental health therapist for help. Other than those things, coping skills during the pandemic can almost be any hobby that you had before the pandemic. Keep those CDC guidelines in mind though. You might not be able to throw any dinner parties or game nights for a while. Going to theme parks or restaurants will feel different as well, but it's up to your discretion to visit them. I recommend visiting the website and assessing if anyone in your circle of contact is high risk. If so, take extra precautions to keep them safe and healthy. Remember that even though it's recommended to stay at least six feet away from others and to wear a mask at all times, this doesn't mean that you can't go outside and it doesn't mean that you can't socialize. It just means you have to be safe about it. Two important tips, get outside and continue exercising. Exercise and sunlight are vital during a time like this. So many people are scared to death of, of leaving their homes and they're not seeing the light of day anymore. The gyms might not be the safest places to go right now, but that doesn't mean that exercise has to cease. You just have to get creative with it, just like you have to get creative with everything else the virus has affected. You can walk, bike, roller skate, skateboard, swim, walk your dog, or even do yard work. It doesn't really matter. I think we all know the plethora of benefits of exercise, but just as a reminder, some of the physical benefits are things like maintaining your weight, 
maintaining strength, managing blood sugar and insulin levels, reducing your risk of certain cancers, improving your sleep, increasing your energy, reducing pain, and improving your bone and heart health. But wait, the benefits of your mental health are even better. Regular exercise increases the production of endorphins, which help produce positive and happy feelings, as well as treats pain. Exercise has also been proven to help with your brain health and your memory, which is something pretty handy if you're a student right now. It can help manage your stress and anger, helps alleviate anxiety, prevents cognitive decline that you may be genetically predisposed to, increases feelings of productivity, helps manage addiction and unhealthy behaviors, improves your ability to relax, and increases your self-esteem. Sounds pretty awesome to me. So why do you need to go outside if you can exercise inside and reap all of the benefits of physical activity? Sunlight. Sunlight provides vitamin D. Vitamin D helps reduce your chance of getting the flu by fortifying your immune system. It also helps reduce your risk of anxiety and depression, can boost your energy, and helps you have a more restful sleep. All things that we need during a quarantine. Besides those things, continue to eat well, stay hydrated, pamper yourself, don't neglect your hygiene, read, and get adequate rest. Your body is where you live, and your health is everything. It's life. Your self-care determines so many aspects of your life. If you don't eat well or get enough sleep, you don't feel well. You're less likely to focus in class or in work or in everyday conversations. You're forgetful, you're tired, you're moody, you have foggy thinking. If you don't take care of yourself, you're more likely to become depressed and unmotivated. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like fun to me, and I, for one, don't have time for that. Also, make sure that you're catering to the five aspects of your self-care. Mental, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual. A lot of activities can take care of all five of those areas at once, but you don't have to stress yourself over doing those things all the time on a daily basis. Just make sure that every aspect gets some attention throughout the month. To keep yourself mentally engaged, you can do things like focus on your assignments and homework. This keeps your brain active and alert. Things like strategy games or puzzles assist with this as well. In a pandemic, staying alert and up to date with current events can help you make wise choices and keep you from getting sick. Emotional self-care is a little trickier. It's essentially being aware of your feelings and honoring them. This is something best left for a therapist to explore with you individually, but I'll give you a little information here. Communicating effectively and assertively helps you acknowledge and process the emotions that you may be struggling with. Suppressing and ignoring your feelings doesn't do anybody any good. It only builds resentment towards others. Setting boundaries with yourself and with others helps protect you from harm and from being spread too thin. Journaling is an excellent way to process emotions if you don't have a therapist available or if you're in between sessions. Staying emotionally healthy during a pandemic will keep you feeling emotionally stable. It's too easy for feelings of hopelessness and isolation to creep in, which will affect our thoughts and in turn our actions. To stay physically healthy, be sure to consult your primary care physician to consider any limitations you may have or alternatives in exercise that may suit you best. Keep in mind that all of the health benefits that exercise provides comes in handy when you're trying to fight an invisible enemy such as a virus, as well as helps keep you feeling as normal as possible when we are instructed to self-isolate. Socializing while being sequestered is a little tricky, but it can be done. Technology is at our fingertips and makes communicating with your loved ones extremely easy. FaceTime, Zoom, instant messaging, and social media are all phenomenal tools to help us keep in touch with our friends and family. Now, you may not put a lot of stock into staying social during a quarantine, but you'd be surprised what long-term isolation can do to a person. Consider those in prison who are in self-isolation. It's used as a punishment and they end up going crazy. 
Human beings are social creatures. We crave the company of others sometimes. Even if you don't feel the need to talk to or spend time with others a lot, when you're forced to be away from your loved ones, it can do a real number on your emotional health. If you feel the need to spend time with others in person, remember those CDC guidelines and be as safe as possible. Lastly, and most interestingly, in my opinion, is spiritual health. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I'm not religious. I don't go to church. I don't have a higher power. I don't believe in anything. That's perfectly okay, and you don't have to. Spiritual health means finding peace within yourself, with others, and with nature. Meditation is one of the greatest tools that I can recommend to anyone. This is a way of centering yourself and taking control of your thoughts and emotions. Searching inside and finding ways to forgive yourself and others are also ways to increase your spiritual health. This is also best addressed with a therapist or a spiritual leader. Take a walk outside and be mindful of everything living. Consider the circle of life. If you happen to identify with a certain faith, then this is much simpler. Attend your religious events, whether they're virtual or in person, whether that means going to church on Sunday, attending temple, going to Kingdom Hall, Bible studies at nights, youth groups on Fridays, or just general fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Communicate with your higher power and read your religious texts. Be faithful and look to your higher power for guidance and consolation. Most of all, continue to prioritize your family and your own self-care. Keep in mind that this will not last forever. So stay positive and stay well. Don't forget to visit www.cdc.gov for more information about social distancing guidelines and how to stay safe. Again, I am Brianna Oswald, G Resolutions Licensed Mental Health Counselor. For more information about strategies or for staying mentally healthy during these times, contact us at 321-631-8569. And speak to one of our counselors. It might even be me. For more information about the Student Assistance Program at EFSC, contact the SAIL office at EFSC. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really enjoyed this. I really hope that this has helped as well. Take care of yourself and please stay safe.